The scene then cuts to Caesar's funeral, where his friends place flowers on his head and light his pyre to pay their tributes. Fast forward to several centuries, the apes have formed distinct clans across the planet. We see three young apes, Noah, Sona, and Anaya embarking on a quest to find eagle eggs for a bonding ritual. They belong to the eagle clan, who celebrate a festival where the youth are tested. They must retrieve eagle eggs from a nest, but can only take two if there are three. The eggs are then cared for until the birds grow up and are trained for hunting. The trio reaches the highest point in the forest and comes across a nest where they find three eggs. But since they can only take two, Noah has to find the third one for himself. He then climbs up the next cliff, where a sun eagle's nest is present. As soon as he grabs an egg, the mother eagle launches an attack, causing him to fall. Thankfully, Noah manages to hold onto the side of an old building. On their way back, they notice that their horses are scared and Noah's blanket is missing. Realizing someone is nearby, they follow the trail to a railway tunnel, where they find the blanket hanging. Sona then bravely retrieves it after which they run away. It is an old rule of the tribe that no apes should cross the tunnel, as they fear encountering humans, whom they call Echoes. The trio soon returns to their village, where Noah's father, Koro, serves as the chief. The entire clan lives on wooden scaffolding built on high-tension electric poles. Noah climbs to the top to meet his father and places the egg in the nest. As the two chat, Koro notices human blood on Noah's blanket and asks if he crossed the tunnel. This scares the young ape, but he lies that he did not cross it. Koro then hands the blanket to his eldest son, instructing him to find the source of the blood. That night, Noah hears a noise in their fish storage and discovers a human girl hiding there. He tries to approach her, but she pushes him away and runs into the forest. This accidentally breaks the eagle egg he was carrying in his pouch. Worried, Noah meets up with his friends and says he needs to find another egg before the sun rises. They offer to delay their rituals to support him, but Noah is adamant on finding a replacement egg tonight. In the next scene, he gets on his horse and rides into the dark forest. Noah doesn't find any eggs, but he does hear a commotion in the distance. Upon heading in that direction, he is shocked to discover the dead body of an ape, wearing masks and armor. Then, all of a sudden, his injured bro appears and warns him that the attackers are coming. Noah tries to inquire more, but bro sadly succumbs to his injuries. Just then, more apes arrive at the scene, prompting him to hide in a nearby bush. Silva, the guerrilla commander of the masked apes, becomes furious upon seeing his army dead. He also notices human blood on the blanket that bro was carrying earlier. It turns out they were chasing the girl whose blood was on the blanket. Unfortunately, Silva also finds Noah's horse and smacks it with an electrocution wand, hoping it will lead them to the village. When Noah returns, he is shocked to discover the entire village in flames. The masked apes are capturing his clan members while repeatedly chanting the words, For Caesar. A scared Noah then climbs up the burning scaffolding to save his father. Unfortunately, Silva notices him and starts following him. Noah somehow manages to free the eagles, but cannot save his father from the mighty commander. Korra ends up dying a painful death, while Noah is thrown off the tower. The next morning, he regains consciousness and finds the village entirely destroyed. Noah sobbingly buries his father's body, while promising to avenge his death. He then proceeds to find the rest of his clan members on his own. But out of nowhere, Korra's eagle appears, so he hops onto his horse and starts following it. For the first time, Noah crosses the forbidden tunnel and emerges on the other side. He is taken aback to find the place filled with tall buildings, where humans once lived. Despite knowing that it's not safe here, Noah keeps pushing forward. He occasionally stops to rest and eats whatever he can get his hands on. The following morning, Koro's eagle appears, and Noah attempts to connect with it using the chant his father had taught him. However, the bird denies his authority and scratches his arm before soaring off. Noah chases after it into the dense forest, where he sees smoke. As he approaches the source, he suddenly falls through a glass sealing into a trap. Noah quickly frees himself, after which he meets a hidden orangutan named Raka. Initially, the latter mistakes him for a masked soldier, as he's carrying the electrocution stick. But when Noah explains his entire ordeal, Raka realizes that he's not an enemy. The orangutan then reveals that his own tribe was recently destroyed by the masked apes. He survived by hiding underneath the forest floor, where he had built a large settlement. Afterward, Raka displays his collection of books to Noah, something which the young ape has never seen. He then explains that he's part of the Order of Caesar, a group devoted to the teachings of the true Caesar. These teachings form the foundation of many laws in the ape society which have been passed down since generations. Sadly, Raka is now the sole surviving member of the Order. He further reveals that the masked apes are misusing Caesar's teachings. They serve a tyrant known as Proximus Caesar, who has started creating his own laws. Raka claims that Caesar was a great ancestor who believed in the strength and unity of apes, not the violence these imposters preach. He reminisces about a time when humans and apes coexisted peacefully, 
a belief that Caesar cherished. Raka eventually decides to help Noah find his clan, hoping he can also be a part of it. The two then pack their essentials and make their way out of the settlement. Later at night, they set up camp and eat whatever provisions they can scavenge. As they are engrossed in conversation, the girl suddenly appears and snatches two fruits. Noah tries to react angrily, but Raka stops him, explaining that the girl is just hungry. He then requests the young ape to give her a blanket for warmth. Initially, Noah refuses, as the blanket belongs to his mother. He doesn't even know if he's meeting her again. But then Raka starts narrating about Caesar's teachings, emphasizing the importance of compassion. This eventually changes Noah's mind, and he gives her the blanket. Raka then names the girl Nova, after the human Caesar once befriended. Later that night, they come across an observatory. Noah looks at the stars through a telescope, and the girl follows suit, reacting with the same sense of wonder. The following day, the apes continue on their journey and the girl decides to follow them. They soon come across a lake where a herd of zebras are gathered. Suddenly, a group of primitive humans appear to drink and bathe in the water. The girl, who is dressed in modern attire, is moved to tears having realized that humans have evolved over time. Meanwhile, Raka gives Noah a locket with Caesar's symbol, advising him to follow his true teachings. In the next scene, Silva and his army arrive at the lake and start rounding up the humans for sport. They also spot the girl hiding behind Raka and attempt to get to her. But in the nick of time, Noah arrives on his horse and escorts them away. Once they are safe, Noah watches the girl closely and tells Raka that she can speak. The orangutan is skeptical as he believes humans are incapable of speaking. However, the girl stuns them both by saying, My name is May. She claims to know where Noah's tribe is being held and offers to guide him there. That night, as others take rest, Noah repairs the electrocution stick he had retrieved from his village. In the morning, May leads the apes to a torrential river that they have to cross via a wooden bridge. The young ape is skeptical about crossing the fragile bridge, however, May assures this the only way to get to Silva's campsite, where his tribe is currently held. Speaking of the devil, Commander Silva and his apes unexpectedly appear on the other side of the bridge and corner them. In the ensuing scuffle, May slips away and gets entangled on a net below. Raka tries to save her, but he also gets caught in the river's thundering current. He attempts to climb back up, but Silva captures the other two before approaching the net with a knife. Just as the net is cut, Raka reminds Noah of Caesar's creed, Apes Together Strong, and gets washed away down the river. Following this, Silva takes Noah and May to his camp on a rusted ship by the shore. It is situated next to a giant vault that the villainous leader Proximus has been trying to open for some time. Upon arrival, Noah notices his clan working as slaves in the blazing heat. Just then, Silva enters a tent with the prisoners, where Proximus is torturing a surviving ape. The commander accuses May of stealing a radio, but the tyrant dismisses her as a mere human and sets her free. He then focuses on Noah, where he smells Koro's scent on his fur and realizes that he's his son. Proximus mocks Noah for being weak and soft, just like his father. To his surprise, Noah refutes by saying he's not weak but believes in the true Caesar's values. This enrages the tyrant, who commands Silva to throw him with the other prisoners. At night, a tired Noah is barely able to get any sleep. The next morning, he's pulled into a long line of slaves who are ordered to dig a trench. May sneaks up to the vault's entrance, where she overhears Proximus mentioning the importance of the vault to the order. He claims that the contents inside will help them bring an end to the age of humans and seal the fate of apes as the dominant species. Later, Noah is reunited with Anaya and Sona, who are also working as slaves. 